Some of the nation's largest retailers filed for bankruptcy in 2020, which is understandable. I mean, 2020 was when the pandemic started. 2020 is when consumer spending went down considerably. People aren't going to stores, they're not purchasing items. So those bankruptcies are understandable. But when you file for bankruptcy, maybe it doesn't make any sense to also simultaneously pay your executives massive bonuses. And that's what's been going on. And I'm here to share the details about it. So a government accountability office report found that about 7,300 companies filed for bankruptcies as the COVID-19 pandemic was in its first act. Of course, 70 asked courts for permission to give retention or inventive bonuses to keep leaders in their roles. And of course, judges agreed. Now listen, as we know, there was all sorts of assistance given to businesses in this country during the pandemic. That seemed to be the top priority for our congressional leaders. They wanted to ensure that they made these businesses whole with forgivable loans as long as they don't fire their employees. And there were a lot of businesses that did not go bankrupt. There were businesses that found ways to adapt to the fact that people were staying at home. But what's fascinating about this is, if you're going bankrupt, it means that you are unable to pay your debts. Now, if you're an average American and you're unable to pay your debts, we know how the elite tend to think of you, right? But the elite apparently not only fail to pay their debts, when they file for bankruptcy, they turn around and pay themselves a considerable amount of money. So in 2020, amid the pandemic, 630 companies declared bankruptcy, the highest count since 2010. We had all heard about the court approved bonuses for five executives at bankrupt Purdue Pharma, totaling $7.1 million last year. You couldn't miss the 16 million in bonuses Hertz paid to keep its management team in place as it drove into bankruptcy last year. So you wanna retain your executives who failed the company and had to file for bankruptcy. Okay, I mean, retaining failures, I guess is a great idea. But like paying them like $7.1 million, it's unbelievable. The average bonus was roughly $701,000. The top bonus was 13.3 million. And that was just what came after the companies went to court looking to have their debts eliminated. So some more specific figures that I think is worth sharing with you guys. There's Hertz CEO, Paul Stone, who received the $700,000. Chuck E. Cheese CEO, David McClippis, he got a $1.3 million bonus. And then you have JCPenney CEO, Jill Saltow, who received 4.5 million, just to name a few. I just wanna ask average Americans, if you fail at your job, if you're mismanaging your job, does your boss give you a bonus for that? I, do you get rewarded for failing? And I'd also love to know what happened to the workforce for these companies. I'm sure they got laid off. I'm sure their pay was cut. I'm sure their pay was awful to begin with. Now, more details, in the before window, other companies shoehorned in 165 million in pre-bankruptcy bonuses, adding to the company's debts as it legally permitted. In fact, 42 of the 70 companies also gave those retention bonuses in the last five months of pre-bankruptcy operations. One such bonus came two days before declaring bankruptcy. But this is all okay, this is all legal, right? The judges approve it. And therein lies the, the real issue. Right, when we talk about how this economic system is rigged against the ordinary worker, this is what we're talking about. When you have a system in place, a power structure in place that allows those at the very top to fail upward, to pay themselves an insane amount of money, while the very people who actually engage in the hard work necessary to generate the income, the revenue, the profits for the company get shafted. It happens time and time again. And the only thing that really changes that is focusing on the power dynamic in the workplace. I mean, union representation is at an all time low right now, which means that workers are not organized, they don't have the ability to 
have a seat at the table and demand better pay, better working conditions. And so yeah, of course, CEOs, executives, they get away with these massive bonuses even as they're failing. And how are they getting away with it? Well, attorneys interviewed by the Government Accountability Office said the Bankruptcy Abuse Act is less than effective because companies have found a way to work around it. Giving retention bonuses overall is problematic, they said, because it effectively reduces the amount of money a company could be paying toward its debt. I mean, they're deadbeats, absolute deadbeats. They don't pay their debts, they file for bankruptcy, but they simultaneously pay themselves millions of dollars. It's absolutely sick. And then you think about that in the context of a system that does not allow students to get rid of their student loan debt if they file for bankruptcy. Because students are powerless, they're the little guys, who cares? The bankruptcy bill codified that. By the way, the bankruptcy bill was championed by our very own president, Joe Biden. But you know, I'm sure if you ask him about it, he'll, he'll tell you to give him a break. But no, he doesn't deserve a break. Because he's part of what has enabled this rigged economic system. And these executives should absolutely be called out for it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.